Hi guys and ladies, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have episode number three of Ramsey's Ramblings on Discontinued Fragrances, which is one of my favorite videos to do. Actually, I wish I could do these all the time because this is one of my favorite topics to talk about discontinued fragrances, but I feel like I have to address something. I think most of my viewers who watch will know this inherently without me having to come out and say it, but whenever I talk about a fragrance, if I hold up a fragrance, and this is my scent of the day, this will be the first one we talk about, but there are two versions of this fragrance. There's this one, and then there's one that has this almost like gunmetal cap, so it's not the cap looks different and it actually says the name around the cap and the sticker is shrunk. That's the reformulated version. That's the second version. So when I show you these discontinued fragrances and I talk about, hey, this is the version that I would go for, all I'm doing is I'm sharing my knowledge that I've acquired from research. Some people think that everyone knows this stuff and that, oh, if you're talking about you have to get this version, you're a gatekeeper and blah, blah, blah. That is not what I'm doing at all. If you own the next reformulated version and you love it, wear what you love. I'm a fan of wearing what you love, no matter what anyone says about you. That's why I have some crazy vintage fragrances that are completely out of style. Um, and I'll show you some in this video. I think there's 17 fragrances here. I just grab a handful of discontinued fragrances that are in my collection and I talk about them on these videos. So that's what you're going to get. You're going to get me discussing different versions, but understand, I'm not saying I'm better than you if I own this bottle and you own the reformulated one. I'm not saying you're wrong if you like the reformulated one. I'm very opinionated and I'm going to give you my opinion. And if I think that this one is better, I will tell you. Or if I've heard that this one is better, I will tell you. That is what this channel really, but also these discontinued fragrance videos, Ramsey's Ramblings especially, are about. They're about my opinion and sharing my knowledge with you because most people don't know about the different versions unless they've done some research. Not everyone has done the research um, to be able to discuss these topics uh, or understand the topics of different fragrances, especially with older discontinued fragrances that are out of the limelight. Unless you're a vintage hunter like myself or a collector like myself, this comes from years of, you know, knowledge and gaining experience in, in the fragrance world. Um, and so that's what these videos are about. Understand, I'm not trying to flex on you guys. I'm not trying to stunt. I'm not trying to say I'm a gatekeeper and I'm right and you're wrong. It's just ridiculous. Some of the things that people uh, get, you know, nitpick about and... Uh, get offended about everyone's so sensitive nowadays, you know, that's why I just can't deal with the drama I just do my thing. I do my videos and I say what needs to be said if you're on my channel You're watching this because of my opinion and that is what kind of sets me apart from a lot of the other channels in my opinion is that I don't get free bottles from brands I form my own opinions and I tell you about them and if people don't like it too bad Sorry, don't watch. Um, but that's what this channel is about. Truth and honesty and sharing the knowledge that I've acquired uh, and the love of fragrances, the art of fragrances. That's what I love, the art form, you know, and it's, it's a beautiful hobby. It really is. Um, and learning about the fragrances, understanding the history. That's what this, that's what the Ramsey's Ramblings videos are about. So please, if you get offended because I'm saying you need the 1994 bottle version versus the other version, maybe you need to take a step back, you know, maybe you need to stop watching fragrance videos for a little while. You know, if, if you're that triggered that, um, you know, I said this version's better than the other and, and you're just ugh, so offended by it, I, I, I don't know if I can help you. Um, I don't know if anyone can help you. You might need to just take a look in the mirror. So that's what I have to say about that. And I'm sorry I have to bring it up, but it is a topic that it's ridiculous. Some of the stuff is just ridiculous, you know. Um, it's like it's like dealing with children sometimes, some with some people. But um, anyways, let's get on to the part that everyone's here for, and that's the fragrances. And first, we're gonna start with scent of the day. Now, this is a fragrance nobody talks about. 
I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about this fragrance at all, actually. I can't think of one. Most of these I can think, hey, Mr. Smelly talked about this one time, or AC, or whatever it may be. Nobody talks about this fragrance. This is Jacques Fat Pour L'Homme. And again, we're talking about different versions. This came out in 1998. It's an Olivier Guillotine creation who also, I think, did some of the Tom Fords. He did, um, what did he do? Tobacco Vanille, I think, maybe? Um, but this is a very interesting fragrance to me because, uh, well, let's go through the fragrance first, and then I'll tell you why it's really interesting. It's compared, at least in my mind, to a very expensive Roja Dove fragrance that is also now happens to be discontinued. I actually grabbed it just to show you guys the comparison but then when I started looking it up, it's now discontinued. So now it's in the video, it has its own little spot. But basically, Jacques Fat Pour L'Homme, it comes in this nice little bottle, which I like the presentation. It, this is the older style cap. So again, the new style cap, the easiest way to date this bottle is the cap. The original versions, if you will, have this, um, the original versions have this, um, chrome, this, um, you know, chrome looking cap with the name of the house is not written on the cap at all. The reformulated bottles that came later, they shrunk the sticker down. Okay. So you'll notice that this is a big sticker. The new ones, the sticker is almost like cut in half and shrunk. So it's a smaller sticker and the cap is this gunmetal gray with the name of, with the name of the fragrance, um, Pour Loam written uh, in cursive around the outside of the cap. That's the easiest way to distinguish. This is the older version. I have not smelled the new version, but from what I've read, there's a lot of people saying that it's a bad reformulation. So from what I've read, get the original if you can. This is not one that's going to break the bank. I think I got this 4.2 ounce, um, so 125 mils. I think I paid like 70 bucks for it within the last couple years this is. Um, so prices may be a little bit higher now, but uh, I think this is one that's still under the radar. If you're collecting, if you're trying to build up your vintage collection, this might be one to look into. Now, one thing I should say about this fragrance is this takes the sweetness about as high as I can go without it bothering me. This is about as sweet as I can get. There is something about sweeter, older fragrances that don't bother me as much as the sweeter, newer fragrances does. So it must be some sort of these synthetic aroma chemicals they're using nowadays. The sweetness in some of those fragrances, the modern sweetness gets to me. This is from 1998. So back then, um, they were using probably different aroma chemicals and whatever they were using for the tonka, uh, the musk, you know, they, the, the sweet notes don't really get to me like they do in modern fragrances. So let's talk about the notes. So in the top, you get bergamot, grapefruit, citrus fruits, and mint, and cedar. So basically when you spray, it opens up with this very, um, grapefruit takes the lead. It's a, it's a grapefruit opening to my nose with woods. So think of it just like grapefruit in this synthetic wood smell with mint, with a little bit of mint. The mint just is there for roundness. It goes away very quickly. And what starts to come to the forefront is this ambery fruitiness. Okay. So you get this, um, amber with raspberry. Raspberry is kind of the, the, the twist here. And then there's lavender. So it keeps it kind of that old school masculine. You get the lavender, but then you get some florals. And I think the fruity florals is what kind of threw people off in the 90s when this was originally released. Because remember, the 90s were all about fresh, transparent, aquatic. It was all about aqua de jo. It was about, you know, stuff like that. Um, low DC uh, by AC Miyake, that kind of stuff. Easy to wear, uh, transparent citruses. And this is kind of the opposite of that. So there's a violet note in here. Now, if you know Roja Dove, who I'm gonna compare this fragrance to one of his fragrances, he loves violet. There's violet, rose, lavender, floral notes, and spices. There are some spices, but it kind of just blends into this goopy, fruity, 
um, you know, somewhat woody. There is patchouli and amber and tonka and musk and some sort of synthetic woods in the bay, some 90s synthetic woods. I, I can't put my finger on it because I don't know. Maybe cedar, maybe a touch of guyac wood. I'm not 100% sure. But what I am sure about is there's an incense note in the base, and that's what saves this fragrance for me from going to a meh to a to something I really like. The incense comes in, and it reminds me of a fragrance that is very expensive and discontinued from Roja Dub, which I only have a decant of. I'll probably only ever have a decant of because I would never, um, I would never buy a full bottle of this since I have Jacques Fat for Pourlon. Uh, and the one that I'm referring to is Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So Kingdom of Saudi Arabia uh, is a fragrance that will remind you of Jack's Fat Porlon because it plays in the same sandbox. So what happens with Rojas is you get the fruitiness, but it comes from almost like a fruit puree, if you will. So you get... Um, you get raspberry, just like in Jack's Fat Porlom, but you also get strawberry, apple, blackcurrant, banana, which is kind of weird. What does that have to do with Saudi Arabia? I don't know. You also get Roja's patented floral heart, which is beautiful, okay? So the quality of the Roja is much better than the Jack's Fat, for sure. The quality of the Roja is through the roof. Um, you get that May Rose, you get the Jasmine from Grass, which is the most sought after jasmine in the world. You get geranium. It opens up with some aldehydes and citruses. No grapefruit in the rosia. You get lime and mandarin orange with artemisia. And then in the base, you get violet leaf, pink pepper, cinnamon, clove, saffron, patchouli, oak moss, cedarwood, fir balsam, sandalwood, oud. So there is oud in this. There's no oud in the Jack's Fat. Cotton candy, vanilla, cacao, a cacao note. Uh, and leather and musk. So it is a little bit more nuanced. The Roja is a little bit more nuanced. It's a, it's better materials. Obviously, if you said, Ramsey, you could have a full bottle of only one, pick one, I'd probably pick the Roja. But when we're talking a fragrance that's 500 bucks now because it's discontinued versus one that I got 125 mil of for 75 bucks, um, this is a no-brainer to me because they pretty much do very similar things in when they're on my skin. You get this ambery, you know, fruitiness. It's done here in a little different fashion than it's done in the Roja because the Roja uses newer notes. It uses oud, which wasn't popular in 1998. Um, you know, and, and technology has changed in the fragrance game since then. Um... But it is very, it's, it's, I immediately, when I first sprayed this, I immediately thought of the Roja Dove. And so since the Roja is discontinued, it gets a spot on the list as well. Uh, most of the older discontinued fragrances you're going to see are older. The Roja only came out in 2017, I believe. So this uh, Middle Eastern line, I don't know what Roja calls it. Uh, but it didn't do very well for them, I don't think. Not many people went out and spent five, six, seven hundred dollars on Kingdom of Saudi Arabia or United Arab Emirates or, you know, all these ones that they did. Probably my favorite is Sultanate of Oman because it has that beautiful incense note, one of the most beautiful incenses. And so you'll notice that I didn't mention an incense note listed in, um, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia from the note breakdown, which is shocking to me because I definitely get, I get a very similar incense note to Sultanate of Oman from Roja Dove. Um, so take that as you will. I think there is an incense note in here. It's just not listed. Maybe it's the oud and leather playing tricks on me, but I think there's an incense note here. So anyways, that's just an interesting one. You'll never, you'll probably never hear any other YouTubers talk about Jack's Fat Poor Loam being compared to Roja's uh, uh, Saudi Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, but there you go. Both are discontinued, um, and you can pick this for the quality of fragrance that you're getting in Jack's Fat Poor Loam. 
outstanding value for money. The Roja value for money is much lower because you're paying top dollar for it, especially now that it's discontinued. But really, when you first spray the Jack's Fat, understand it's going to take a little bit to settle. When you first spray, you just get this, you know, melange of notes that just kind of mixes. And once it starts to dry, once the fragrance opens up on your skin, usually about 45 minutes to an hour in, which I've got a three and a half hour dry down right here. And I'll tell you what, it is beautiful. When that incense note comes in with the amber and it's just absolutely gorgeous, that fruity raspberry. Mm, it, I don't think, I think it was just great fragrance, wrong time is my opinion. But if you look at some of the um, reviews on Parfumo, some of, some of the people just annihilate it, uh, which, which kind of shocked me uh, that the reviews were so bad. And I'm curious whether they're smelling this one or the reformulated one. So that's that's the problem. I don't have the newer juice to do a comparison, but the one I can vouch for is this one. So enough on Jack's Fat Poilhomme. Let's go to the next fragrance, which is going to be one that I wore within the last couple weeks as my scent of the day. It's the only Donna Karen fragrance that I own in my collection. And it's a unicorn. Uh, this is heavily sought after, and it's called... Donna Karen Men, DK Men, and it looks like this basically. There's the bottom of the uh, of the bottle. This came out in 1994, and on Parfumo, there's only four notes listed: citrus notes, spices, tobacco, and suede. And you definitely get that suede vibe from this. You get this ambery suede vibe from this. This is supposedly supposed to be like the shifter of a car, apparently. Someone told me that um, Donna Karen's husband was really big into muscle cars and stuff like that. And so they made this, they made this bottle as like a representation of maybe like the gear shaft of a car or the shifter of a car. I, I don't know, but it has something to do with... Um, with the car. So the bottle is very unique. Very unique bottle. And I'll tell you what, if you look this up on Fragrantica and you look this up on Parfumo, you'll get two completely different takes. So uh, Fragrantica shows IFF and Jean-Claude Deville as the perfumer. Uh, and it shows a ton of notes. Pineapple, apricot, peach, osmanthus. I do get a little bit of an osmanthus vibe. Definitely Osmanthus. I mentioned, imagine you're smelling like a Herod from the 90s, like before Parfums de Marly made Herod with Osmanthus and tobacco. This is like Herod's father. Um, and I actually like this more than Herod, to be honest with you. You do get this floral heart as well, even though there's no florals listed in Parfumo. You do get a little bit of that ambery floral with incense, benzoin, suede and it's definitely suede maybe a suede leather mixture but definitely you get this um velvety suede like feel like imagine you're imagine you're smelling one of those suede uh louboutin slippers that uh that you'll see members of the community uh wearing out and about those $1,500 slippers that imagine you're smelling that that suede like feel uh, with incense but this amberiness a little bit of fruitiness a little bit of floral it's a beautiful fragrance and uh, it, it, it did in 2008 so they renamed it from DK men to fuel for men and they did a re-release again I don't know if there was a reformulation in that re-release. Jonathan has the re-release Fuel for Men. Uh, he was asking me if it's worth hunting down the 1994 version, and I don't know because I've never smelled his. He's never smelled mine. Um, so maybe we can do a swap one day and, and do a, um, you know, early first impression or comparison videos. Um, but it did get re-released under the name Fuel for Men. I don't know if it's exactly the same, though, or if there were changes, but I can vouch for this one. If you can ever find a bottle and not have to give up your kidney, um, this is definitely one to, to look into, and the juice on mine is right about there. I think these are 75 ml bottles. 
So I've got some, I've got some good use left in it. And this is one to cherish. Uh, okay, now we're going to go to the house of Escada. All of Escada's masculine perfumes are discontinued. So they are like the king of this video because everything they've ever done uh, for men now is discontinued. And I've got four of their perfumes. I wish I had one more. I'm hunting down another one. Um, a different version of one of the fragrances I have. We'll get to it at the very end. But to start, we're going to do my least favorite Escada masculine. And if I had to sell one, this is probably the one that I would sell. It just doesn't do it for me. It's very spicy, fresh. It is done by Dominique Ropion. So you have a master perfumer with um, Laurent Bruyerie. Um, is how I'm guessing you pronounce her name, Bruyere. Um And it does come in a cool bottle. I'll tell you that. It's almost like this Tetris bottle. I've shown this off before on my channel. I don't know if they found a bunch of these in a warehouse one day or what, but they popped up for like 20 bucks. And I just, I grabbed it. So you can see it's uh, Ascada Beauty. And it is at a... At a pair limited is the distributor I believe and then I think someone else started distributing it and then it got discontinued I don't think the distributor matters on this one I don't think the version matters it's just a matter of whether you like this perfume style basically what you get is this very fresh very zesty spicy um, juniper with lime in the opening. The spices come from nutmeg, pimento, and pink pepper, and then the base is sandalwood, vetiver, and cedar. And so you do get this nice woody. It's good to wear in the heat. I mean, if you wanted to wear something non-offensive that very few people will be wearing, uh, this came out in 2002. And for 20 bucks, yes, I'm glad to have this bottle, but I've seen these 50 ml bottles now online for 120, 150, 175 dollars now? Do not pay that. That's my advice. I don't think this fragrance is worth that kind of money. If you get a good cheap bottle, yes, go for it. It's good for the spring and summer. Um, if you even like, you know, those easier to wear fragrances like Aventus, this might be one to check out. Um, Next on the list, one that I like a little bit more than Sentiment, is another Dominique Ropion. He did a couple things for the house. This is Casual Friday. Now, this fragrance is compared to uh, fragrances like Mabussin Ohm, um, which Alberto Morias did a couple years later. This came out in 1999. So you have to remember in the 90s, Le Mal was very big from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. Francis Kirkjohn did Le Mans, and that really kind of made his career. This is a better version of Le Mans to me. Um, it has this anise and old school lavender opening that I that I like more. Le Mans tries to be very modern. Um, you know, it, 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 it doesn't give very much homage to, to the past. This does with the anise, um, you get this beautiful cinnamon. There's a, there is a lovely lavender anise cinnamon thing going on, but for me, the base is very vanilla heavy. So you have to like that lavender vanilla, almost like, you know, Caron Porno modernized for the nineties, if you will. But there are other things here. There's cardamom, jasmine, carnation, lily of the valley, cinnamon, patchouli, oak moss, amber, tonka cedar, and then that vanilla note in the base is a big one. The opening also has bergamot, tarragon, coriander to mix in with the anise and lavender. But really, if you picked out uh, three main notes, you would pick the lavender, you would pick the cinnamon, and you would pick the vanilla. And those are the three big ones. It's very easy to wear. It's very likable. Um, my bottle is, again, Escada Beauty, distributed by Adapair. I don't know... Uh, about other versions or anything like that. I don't think this is one you care about the version. I think pretty much all of the Escadas, you don't care about the version. You just try and find the fragrance because they're all discontinued and they're all kind of unicorns at this point. Okay, next on the Escada discontinued list is, and we're going in kind of order of how I like these 
perfumes. So next after magnetism, just for the House of Escada, not all these by the way, but just for the House of Escada, I kind of just put these in order of my least favorite to my favorite. And uh, next on the list is going to be magnetism for men. And you can see um, I bought a partial bottle. Can you see the juice? It's like right there. Um, and this is the big bottle. This is the 100 ml. But uh, I'm just glad to find some of this juice. I saw some crazy prices. Insane prices on this fragrance. Um, it was done by Michel Almarac, who I really respect and appreciate. I love Michel Almarac's work. Basically, what you get here is you get this tooth. This came out in 2004. So in 2002, I think M7 came out by YSL. And I think they kind of had M7 in the back of their mind because you get a little bit of this cola vibe in the opening, kind of like M7. There's no oud listed, but there is saffron, big saffron note with uh, pepper tree, pepper, musk, leather, amber. Amber's a huge note here. Sandalwood, tolu balsam, vanilla, and cedar. Vanilla is a big note here as well. Leather is the other big note. It's an ambery, leathery fragrance that feels very... You get that cola vibe in the opening. It's a well-done designer. I really enjoy wearing it um, for the colder weather. Do not pay $250 a bottle for this. You know, there's just some old designers that just aren't worth that kind of money. They're just not. I mean, for the people who wore them, maybe it really takes them back to their high school, university days, their early 20s when they were having a good time and they want to relive that. But for the average person who is objective and doesn't have experience with this fragrance, it's just not worth $250 a bottle. It's not that kind of fragrance. Um, the first three Escadas I'm showing you actually are not to me. and uh, But I really enjoy it. And if you can find a bottle at a decent price or get a partial like I did, Escada Magnetism for Men is definitely worth putting on the watch list. Okay. Now, the Escada fragrance I do think is worth big money. I got a good deal on this one. I'm still hunting for the Eau de Parfum. Eau de Parfum is impossible to find without really paying big bucks. Huge markups on the Eau de Parfum. This is the Eau de Toilette. I still love it and enjoy it. This is the best Escada fragrance to me, for my taste, hands down. Um, this is Escada Pour Homme from 1993. And Escada Pour Homme, uh, you can see there's the distributor, distributed by Escada Beauty, if you're interested. So Escada Pour Homme is in this category of scents for me that are very familiar. They're scents that I love, I feel very comfortable with. If you just let me say, you know, pick some fragrances and throw it in the pot that, you know, remind you of of um, late 80s, early 90s fragrances. There would be Escada Pour Homme, there would be Heritage by Guerlain, there would be YSL Jazz, and there would be uh, one of the next fragrances coming up, Davidoff Zeno, which is officially discontinued now. Uh, and those kind of fragrances, for whatever reason, maybe it's that patchouli they were using in the late 80s, early 90s, Maybe it's the fact that these are kind of complex fragrances. Um, they, they have some moving parts to them. They're not just something that you'll sniff one time and decide right there and then whether you love it. I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, I think there was some copying going on too. You know, there was some borrowing from the style because Guerlain's Heritage was a hit, huge hit. Jean-Paul Guerlain caught lightning in a bottle with that one. And that's my favorite Guerlain masculine perfume of all time. Um, Abbey Rouge will be second, if you're wondering. But um, Escada Pour Homme does the heritage thing, but it adds something extra. And what it adds extra doesn't necessarily mean it's a better fragrance. Um, because heritage made my top 10 all-time favorite fragrances on my top 100. That shows how much I love that perfume, and I give it all of the credit it deserves. Um, 
this takes that DNA to me and it came out a year or two after Heritage. So just like I said, Ascata Magnetism had M7 in mind maybe when they were creating it. Ascata Parolm, I think, had Heritage in mind. It was um, influencing Ascata, let's say. And this was last marketed by Scanon. And again, my bottle says Ascata Beauty. So we're talking about versions here. Again, I'm not saying if you own the Scanon one, you're a bad person. Don't get all offended. I'm just saying that there could potentially be differences. And I am not up to date on what those differences are. The Ascata Beauty bottle, I can speak to. This, I love. Uh, and I would love the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Parfum would be a dream fragrance for me to have. Um, it's, it's bergamot, Italian lemon, orange, and that orange does really show up with pimento and lavender in the top with, the twist here is cognac. So imagine a boozy heritage, right? With carnation, geranium, cardamom, caraway, bay leaf, nutmeg, juniper, and cinnamon in the heart. And the base of musk, patchouli, sandalwood, tonka bean, vanilla. The sandalwood is gorgeous here. Um, the patchouli is beautiful. The patchouli in Heritage is better, I think, but it's still fantastic. I love this fragrance. I feel at home in this fragrance. I could wear this fragrance lounging around the house, and I could wear this fragrance to the most important meeting of my life. That's honestly how I feel about this perfume. Uh... It's that anytime, any place, anytime you want to smell, um, you know, this has this, this has this very put together vibe, this very, you know, a man who has his, um, a man who has his priorities in order. He's not behind on his bills. He doesn't, he doesn't try and be someone that he's not. You know, he knows who he is inside of himself. That's the vibe that I get from those fragrances I mentioned. Jazz, Heritage, Zeno, and this. Um, for whatever reason, maybe it's because I was a kid uh, when these were popular. Maybe I smelled them on influential male figures. But this is, those fragrances I mentioned, most fragrances I say anyone can wear. And, and it's true, anyone could wear these. A woman could wear this, sure. But... To me, this is 99% masculine. This is not something the women would want to dip into, in my opinion. Um, so, there you have it. That's just the way I feel about this, this grouping of fragrances. I think this is for the men. This smells the best on, on men. This is a masculine scent. And I think, you know, most people out and about will, um, you know, they will associate this with, mas with masculinity. Okay, speaking of masculinity, we're going to go to a Davidoff that has a beautiful castorium note, a beautiful leather castorium, uh, maybe even real ambergris, uh, and this is the only bottle I have, this little baby 25 ml bottle. I wish I had more, but, um, you know, I'm just glad to ha have had the ability to try it. I will review it before I finish this bottle. This is the original Davidoff, Davidoff, so it's just Davidoff by Davidoff from 1984. And if you take a look, this is distributed by Lancaster. So speaking of distributors, uh, I think Davidoff was the original distributor, then it went to Lancaster. Um, and then I'm honestly not 100% sure where it went, but if it was discontinued right then and there, because I know it didn't last too long. Um, and it's this spicy green scent, but there's so much beauty in this. If you like fragrances, there's a fragrance that made my discontinued list. Uh, one of the first or the second one called Dior Jules. So how I've said Escada had M7 in mind. Um, or I'm sorry, Magnetism had M7 in mind. Escada Pour Homme had Heritage in mind. This may have had a little bit of Dior Jules in mind, which came out in 1980, and this came out in 84. So Dior Jules may have been, a, uh, you know, something that influenced Davidoff, but I absolutely love this fragrance. It's so masculine, it's so 80s. Lemon, bergamot, lime, uh, basil, mugwort, 
Fruity notes, I can't say I get very much fruity notes. It's not like Jack's Fat Pour Lone, where that raspberry is really front and center. Fruity, if there is a fruity note here, it's really in the background just for depth. And then jasmine, iris, carnation, thyme, rose, cedarwood, and a note of hay. And um, there is a hay absolute that Russian Adam sent me that I got to smell. And it, and it is beautiful. There's some beautiful ingredients that... I got to smell because of his kindness. I'll have a I'll have a ton of, you know, time in the future to maybe put an ingredient on one hand, put a perfume that has the ingredient on in another and kind of talk about it. So much content I have because of uh, his kindness. Patchouli, leather, ambergris, moss, frankincense, castorium, and vetiver. And the castorium here is big. If you're a fan of castorium and perfumes, if you're a fan of... Antaeus. Um, if you're a fan of what else has castorium, maybe Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme, which is also one of my favorites. That will definitely be on one of these Discon Ramsey's Ramblings lists sometime soon. Um, check this one out, you know, and if you're a fan of Jules, because Jules really, re really reminds me of this, this perfume in some senses, some ways there are differences, obviously, but in some senses it has that leather uh, that 80s old school leather that I that I love and uh, just glad to get to experience this long last perfume. Edward Fleischier was the uh, perfumer, by the way. Okay, now we're going to go on to the second Davidoff fragrance, which uh, again, Parfumo shows as the production was apparently discontinued. This has been rumored for a long time and it's kind of similar to Midnight in Paris. Midnight in Paris got discontinued by Van Cleef and Arpels, and people thought, no way, it's not discontinued. You can still get it at the discounters for 20, 30 bucks. But then once that stock dried up and prices really started to rise, the open market really took over. Uh, you know, the capitalistic market took over and people wanted to take advantage of the fact they had something rare. So they started to jack the price up. And I think this is what will happen with Zeno. If you can still find this for 20, 30, 40 bucks, I don't know. I haven't looked at prices in a while. Get it. And we're talking about distributors again. So mine, there's, there's two bottles that I have that I'll show you. This one, you can see the distributor down there is Lancaster. That's the one that I would probably urge you to get. Although... A lot of people have come back, well not a lot, but one person has come back and said he actually prefers the newer uh, bottles for whatever reason. And so maybe this is one where versions don't matter. But if you had a choice, I would say get the Lancaster bottle. This is another Lancaster bottle, but you can see this one is actually engraved instead of a sticker. So this one is engraved in the bottle. Oh, I love this perfume. This falls right into that Escada Pour Homme, Guerlain, Heritage, YSL Jazz category for me in my mind. This is Lavender, Clary Sage, which has this, you know, almost like outdoor, sweaty type vibe. Uh, bergamot with rosewood. The rosewood here is just to die for. Uh, there's rosewood in Tom Ford's Oud Wood, which I absolutely love as well. Uh, even though the perfumes smell nothing alike, that rosewood note kind of reminds me of each other. Geranium, jasmine, lily of the valley, and rose. There is a, a floral heart to this that maybe will put some men off if you're not used to wearing fragrances with a, with a rose note that tends to come to the forefront in different weathers. Amber, patchouli, sandalwood, tonka, vanilla, and cedar in the base. So again, that sandalwood cedar combo with patchouli I just I just love the the style I love the way it wears I love how versatile it is I'm a huge fan I have three bottles of this um, uh, some people say that um, they prefer beau de jour over this, I don't own Beau de Jour because I own this. So, I mean, take that for what it's worth. Uh, I also own YSL's Reve Gauche Pour Homme, which I'd rather wear this in Reve Gauche Pour Homme in the tin can over Beau de Jour. That's just my personal opinion. 
But uh, if you like this style, maybe check out Beau de Jour. Okay, now we are going to go to a perfume that no one talks about. In fact, I've never seen it on YouTube ever. Uh, and I only bought this bottle on a whim because I had made an acquaintance with a guy who I guess maybe his aunt or uncle passed away or I, I can't remember. Someone passed away and he was just selling these perfumes and he gave me a hell of a deal. I paid $10 for this. And this is a perfume called Russian Leather 2 by the house of Del Oro. And if you look down at the bottom, you can see it says Cosmetco, Long Beach, California. So, um, there apparently there was a perfume company called Del Oro that uh, made these, you know, little small batch fragrances. Uh, I don't know when they went bankrupt. There's nothing on the bottom. It's a stock bottle. I just decanted it and, and I've worn it a couple times. And you know me, I love Russian leather. Queer de Russi by Chanel made my top 10 as far as my favorite fragrances of all time. And this is a little bit different. It's going to be hard to describe because you have to understand Russian leathers have that, that horse smell, that boots, that, you know, old boot smell, that, um, you know, leather gloves type smell, that, that birch tar type smell. Birch is a huge um, component of what they used to use to make the leather uh, malleable and keep it from breaking down. And, and that's really what it turned out to be. The Russian army used to, um, they used to, how can you put it? Uh, they used to cure their leather a certain way. And some of it was kind of disgusting. Like they used to use uh, piss or they used to use, um, one of the things that they actually used to use that not a lot of people know about is they used to use seal oil or like some sort of heavy animal fat oil, like whale oil or something like that. It would soften the leather, it would preserve it. And it gave it this very distinctive smell that nowadays you're not going to get from, they're not going to go kill seals to, to create the Russian leather. Um, and so it, you know, there, there's a lot going on for me, a lot going on in Russian leather. And it's very close to my heart because, because it reminds me of the past in like a photorealistic way that very few perfumes from the past can do ever. Uh, this and Chanel's um, Queer de Russie are two of my favorites. Another one that I own, let me, well, I don't even know if I want to show you. Maybe I'll show you on another video because it's also discontinued, I think. Uh, but there's an old Farina Russian leather fragrance, Farina Konish or something like that, that um, came out. It's a very old house. Karina was a house that came out, or Farina, I'm sorry, Farina, forgive me. Farina was a house that came out hundreds of years ago in Germany. And so this is, these type of leather fragrances are not for beginners because they have this animalic side to them. Like it smells like, I, I've often said that Russian leather perfumes feel like you're riding in a horse and carriage buggy from 125, 50, 150 years ago. And, but you're in luxury. You're in the most beautiful horse and carriage buggy you could imagine. There is, um, you know, banquets and there's balls and beautiful chandeliers and you're in your best, you know, gown if you're a woman or tux if you're a man and you have your jewelry on that's just beautiful. But then you go outside and it's not like today where there's roads paved and you can just get in your car and drive. You've got to get into a horse buggy and the horses do what horses do. You know, they smell animalic uh, where they lay the things that they eat, uh, their droppings, all of that contributes to it. And the birch tar in this is absolutely beautiful. It is, um, 
it's probably one of the best finds that I've ever had as far as value for money. Like the guy obviously didn't know what he had and I had never smelled this, but I knew I loved Russian leather. So I took a chance and what a chance it was. Um, it's, 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 it's an amazing, uh, birchy, oily, you know, birch can give off this smoky vibe sometimes. And so, you know, it's, I want to show you the perfume. You may not be able to find it, or if you do, I promise you, you won't find it for 10 bucks. That was just a pure fluke, which sometimes when you're collecting, you have to be ready for the fluke. You have to be willing to take a chance. Um, oh, it's so good. Um, it's, it's fantastic. It, it, it really is. If you're a Russian leather lover, look for some of these other random brands like this, other than just the Chanel. I would start with the Chanel. Chanel's Queer de Russi is the reference, uh, Russian leather for me, but everything else around it that I've found, these other little Russian leathers are also very good. I wouldn't put this as good as the Chanel because Chanel has that special quality. It has that Chanel pizzazz, you know, that, that, that spark, that, that, um, luxury feel, um, that class, class is the word I was looking for. It has that Chanel class about it, but if you're just a perfume lover and you're not trying to wear something that's going to make you seem like you're in a tuxedo all the time and you just want a beautiful Russian leather, Del Oro is amazing. Took, took me off guard how good that fragrance is. Okay. Now, another one that um, Parfumo shows is discontinued, unfortunately, is this, because this is my favorite Eldo fragrance, Atat Libre de Orange, and this is Je suis un homme, which means I am man, I believe, and oh, this is, speaking of leather, this is another leather, and I think this is Antoine Lee's take on like a modernized niche version of Bellamy. Bellamy was very influential to Antoine Lee growing up when he was a younger man. And this has this bergamot, bitter orange, myrtle, and lemon with a heart of cognac, clove, and cinnamon, but it's all about the base for me. The base is animalic notes, leather, and patchouli. So it's about the base and the citruses uh, because the citruses, this is a very citrus heavy fragrance um, I mentioned yesterday that when I did my comparison video between Jaipur, Om, EDT, and EDP, that if you wanted to wear a fresh oriental fragrance, uh, Jaipur, Om is a fantastic choice. If you want to wear a fresh leather that can be worn in the warmer weather, this is it. This is the one. And this is backup bottle worthy for me. And speaking of versions... Let me show you versions because my bottle of Je Suis Un Homme has this kind of gunmetal cap on it with no writing. The new bottles have this chrome looking cap with writing on the top. So that's how you can date them. One of the ways you can date them. Also, the newer bottles, if it doesn't have a cap, is much more like the writing here is raised. I don't know if you can tell, but the writing is actually raised, whereas here, it's almost just like a sticker. This is the newer version of Rien, which is still amazing, but uh, I can't preach for the newer version of Je Suis Un Homme because I've never smelled it, but I love this perfume. I need to wear it soon. It's been a while. Okay, now we're going to talk about an aromatic fougere that came out in 1983. I've only really heard Mr. Smelly talk about this once. Haven't heard many other people talk about this perfume. This is another one of those, you know, call it what you want, hidden gems, under the radar, B-sides, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is Enrico Coveri Pour Homme from 1983. Now, my bottle is the newest version. This is not the oldest version, and it's, it's produced by a, a distributor called Evaflor. And Evaflor is the newest distributor of this. I don't know how, when they went out of business or whatever it is. I don't know if it was five years ago, 10 years ago, two years ago, 20 years ago. I have no clue because this is from 1983. But I will tell you that 
there are some rumblings on Parfumo, and it actually says multiple notes are reported for this fragrance. See Parfumo Research. If you go to Research, you'll see that there are some disputes for the notes, let's say. But what's listed is bergamot, lemon, lime, and grapefruit with lavender, pine, uh, basil, tarragon, clove, cumin, geranium, and jasmine with patchouli, cedar, vetiver, sandalwood, amber, musk, and vanilla. To me, it's a, it's a take on a fougere. Beautiful clove note, if you're a fan of clove. A little bit of dirtiness from the cumin, but some freshness from the geranium. It has that contrast. And I usually like to wear my fougere fragrances in the um, warmer weather, for whatever reason, I just do. And so if you like fragrances like Zarius by... Um, uh, Givenchy, Zarius from 86, I think it was. That was a couple years after Enrico Coveri Poil. Uh, and so that's the, that's the style that it's in. If you like Borsellino, even though Borsellino is more of a chifra, for some reason, sometimes those chifra, sometimes the chifras and the fougeres, when they're done in a certain style, kind of blend in my mind. And um, this, is a, this is an aromatic fougere that is done very well in the classic sense. You know, if you like classic aromatic fougeres, check out Enrico Coveri Porhomme. Okay, on to the other side of the table. Only five left. Six left, five left. Um, so this one is a revelation for me. This is one of the fragrances that really shocked me when I when I first got it. I bought it off of um, a recommendation from AC at the Smells Good channel. And he basically said that this is one of the finest leather chiffres you can buy for the money. And I thought, well, shit, I mean, the finest leather chiffres you can buy for the money. Let me go hunt a bottle down. So that's exactly what I did. And this fragrance is one of the fragrances that tore the wall down for me for men wearing women's scents and women wearing men's scents. Um, and so the perfume is a fragrance by the House of Estee Lauder, and it's called Azure. Now, a word of caution, they are still selling Azure as a fragrance, but it looks nothing like this. I've never smelled it. However, however, the Wafts from the Lofts guys did a video where they mentioned one of them bought the modern version of Azure, along with, I think, the modern version of Cabochard or something. They loved the modern version of Cabochard, hated the modern version of Azure, like threw it out, gave it away or something. So make sure you get this bottle. And again, I'm not telling you that to tell you that I'm better than you or anything like that. Don't get all, don't get your panties all in a wad. But what I am saying is that this fragrance relies heavily on oak moss. Like, to me, this is a oak moss leather bomb. And it's absolutely stunning. So the closest thing that I can uh, compare this to is probably something like Aramis Aramis from 1964. It's the exact same perfumer. Bernard Chant made this. I just love smelling this. Just smelling it from the cap. Oh, my um, it's aldehydes, artemisia, basil, gardenia, jasmine, and citruses with mugwort, geranium, orris root, rose, vetiver, ylang ylang, amber, leather, moss, musk, and patchouli. You know, I even get a little bit of, of this. I get a little bit of Diaghilev, which is one of my favorite perfumes ever. Oh, there is, there's a little bit of, of Azure in this. And you know Roja loves his, you know Roja loves his vintage fragrances and I'm sure he knows about this. So if I were to reconstruct Diaghilev, it's not just a take on Mitsuko. It's not just a take on Rochas Femme. It's a take on Mitsuko, Rochas Femme, Azure, 
and Bandy. That's how I think about it. That's how I think about Diagolev. My God. Um, honestly, if you can find this bottle, okay? Look at the shape of the bottle. Look at the gold that comes down here around the edges like this. I would highly urge you to get this. Um, I don't think you can find a better leather sheafer. You'll have to spend tons of money. You'll have to spend tons of money to get something that is, you know, comparable. Um, it's just unbelievable. And I can't believe women used to smell like this. I just cannot believe it. I would love for modern day women to start wearing stuff like Azure again. Um, so that is, um, that's the only Estee Lauder on this list. Next on the list, we're gonna go to the House of Hugo Boss. And we've got uh, four fragrances on the list. They are in no order whatsoever. Uh, the first one is a fragrance called Boss Elements. Look at the bottle. Looks like there's like a mountain range here. You know, back when they used to put time and effort into bottles. And this is a splash. This is, so it was last marketed by Ellen Betrix or Eurocos, I believe. This is a Eurocos bottle. Frankfurt, Hunt Valley, Maryland, made in Germany. And uh, this is basically bergamot, mandarin orange with plum. So it has this fruitiness with tarragon, thyme, juniper, oak moss, sandalwood, and cedar. It reminds me a little bit of Atkinson's Rockford. For whatever reason, I don't know why. I don't think they're anything alike. But I just get this spark of a, of a reminder. And it's this aromatic, woody, fruity, spicy. The aromatic notes from tarragon, thyme, the fresher notes of juniper, the fruity notes, the woody, the oak moss. It's a beautiful fragrance. And this is probably the last of the great Hugo Bosses for me. I don't like Boss Bottle. That apple pie is probably going to miss Anique Minardo ever had, to be honest with you, as far as I'm concerned. And But Boss Elements, what a fragrance. Next, I only have a mini of this one. I wish I had a full bottle. It's Boss Spirit. I did an early impression of this on my channel. Go watch it if you're interested. This fragrance, I would love to have a full bottle of this one day. Uh, it would just, it would, it would complete my collection. Uh, apparently there are different versions, but I don't know about them. So I'm just going to tell you that this fragrance is rare enough that if you can find it, just get it. It's, it's one of the ultimate green openings, one of the best green openings I've ever smelled. It incorporates aldehydes with Artemisia, Tarragon, galbanum, and peppermint, and uh, uh, tarragon. Tarragon's in the heart and the, and the top, by the way. Then there's geranium, lavender, and then the base is things that I love. Patchouli, leather, sandalwood, amber. But that greenness in the opening, this is just... You know, I watched some YouTube reviewers do, like, top 10 boss fragrances of all time list. They don't have any of the boss fragrances that I own. None. Uh, and it's a it's a travesty to see a top 10 boss list and not see boss elements, boss um, spirit, or boss sport, which is the next one. This used to be my favorite sport fragrance. Look how 80s it is. Look at that tennis racket and, and, and hockey stick. Absolutely amazing with the pinstripes. Love it. Uh, this is Eurocos, made in Germany. Apparently, the original version had a red cap, but I can tell you, I've never smelled the one with the red cap, but I can vouch for this bottle. So either bottle, whatever you can get, get it. Um, and this is, this is what I would have considered until I discovered Chanel's Antaeus Sport. The best... Um, the best sport fragrance ever for me. And so Antaeus Sport just ekes it out, but Boss Sport, my goodness. Mugwort, Bergamot, Mandarin Orange, Tagets, which you don't see very often. 
juniper, lemon, tarragon, carnation, geranium, jasmine, lily, mace, clary, sage, and rose. So there is this floral bit to it, but it somehow stays so beautifully masculine. Amber, moss, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, tonka, cedar. Oh, I should have been... I should have been around in the 80s. I mean, I, I was born in the 80s, but I would have loved the 1980s. Um, if you let me turn back the clock, I would totally do it. And this may seem strange to some folks. It may seem there's a little bit of, you know, this fresh soapiness to it or whatever. Um, but I just absolutely love it. It is, it's so posh. It's so, you know, country club. Uh, it's, it's just... It's, it's just relaxing, playing golf, you know, whatever you want to think about your country club day to be. Beautiful day, spring, spring day. This is just boss sport. No one talks about this one either. And then my favorite um, fragrance that I'm going to add to this list, even though it's not discontinued, it's currently being marketed by Coty. And it comes in this new bottle that I've never smelled. So I would urge you, while you can still get this, to get this version. Okay, this is boss number one. My favorite, made in my top ten. Okay, um, this is the one that actually says number one on it. This is the one that's older and doesn't even say number one on the bottle. They're both Eurocos, um, Giorgio Beverly Hills, okay, made in the UK. Uh, Giorgio Beverly Hills, made in the UK. Okay, so the ones that are Giorgio Beverly Hills, I guess Giorgio Beverly Hills used to own Hugo Boss, I can vouch for. The new stuff, I can't. So since this is a discontinued video, this is a discontinued version of this fragrance that I would urge you to get. If you like my tastes, this is perfection. I could wear this. If I had a signature scent, it could be this. Easily. Easily. Oh, I just melt when I smell Hugo Boss number one. It is, some people say it has this men's restroom vibe in the opening. I don't get that. I just get beautiful honey. The honey note in here, the lavender, the greenness. There's even green apple, which Maybe it was a precursor to Boss Bottled. Um, Rich Mitch said that, and I never thought of that. Genius um, genius thought there, Rich. Uh, basil, bergamot, tarragon, grapefruit, juniper, lemon with orris root, jasmine, lavender, lily of the valley, rose, and sage. And then it's amber, oak moss, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, tobacco. Cedar and cinnamon, my God. I mean, perfection. And look at look at my whole bottle. Back when they used to write by hand the price on. Oh, it's heaven. If you're a honey lover, heaven. This is heaven. Um, Hugo Boss, number one. Or if you can get the version that doesn't say number one on the front, if it's that old, that's what you want. Uh, and anytime you see me with a backup bottle, anytime you see me with a bottle, this came first. And then this came, and I got a bigger bottle as a backup, you know this is a love. Uh, and so maybe the new stuff is great. Maybe I'm just being a jerk to Cody, to Cody, who is distributing this, marketing this, whatever it is. Um, but... You know, sometimes you have to be preemptive in the fragrance world. You don't want to go, oh, I'm sure it'll be fine, and then your bottle runs out, and you go get the new one, and you're let down, and then this bottle, once people realize what's going on, has skyrocketed in price. So, for you vintage lovers out there, Hugo Boss number one in this bottle is my final recommendation. So, thanks for watching. Um, love hearing the feedback. I know you guys love these discontinued videos. They just take a lot of time to do to pull it all out and put it all back and, you know, talk about it. But we got a good amount done today. And this is the third iteration. So I don't know how many more we could do. We could probably do another six or seven videos at this rate um, with all the discontinued fragrances I have. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do let me know in the comments what some of your favorites are. Um, and like I've said many a times before, I'll say it again, a like, a subscription, it always helps. It helps the exposure. It helps the eyeballs on YouTube find me amongst the crowd. You know, the like-minded people, the people that we want in our tribe, the ones that are like us, uh, that love perfume first. And, you know, I've come across so many beautiful human beings just in this little uh, seven-month journey or whatever it is, eight-month journey that I've had now uh, of uploading to YouTube. I've been doing this for a lot longer, but you know, Rich Mitch talked me into uploading to YouTube at the end of 2021. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's been a real pleasure. I want more of those people to find me. I don't want the crowd. I don't want, I don't want the people who are just getting into the hobby and get offended because I say something bad about Versace Dylan Blue. Those people, I don't care about. Um, I want the people who are like us. And that's what a like and a subscription does. It helps, you know, not necessarily, I'm not trying to compete with the big channels because I never will. Uh, I'm not sponsored. You know, I don't put graphics up. I just turn on the camera and talk. And, you know, I'll never be able to compete with the uh, subs of those kind of bigger channels. Uh, but I don't care about that. I don't want that. But I do want the people who want to find the content that I'm putting out to be able to. And that's where the like, subscription, comments, they all help the videos uh, get exposure. So thanks for watching guys. See you again tomorrow with another video. Bye-bye.